Uh, let me put it this way. I think this is, will be this will be a very uh, hard fought, robust election. Uh, but I welcome it because, in a sense, it's reflective of uh, how far we've come uh, in the in the democratic process. In Malaysia, we're much more matured in that sense. Uh, but um, as a political party, uh, we, we have uh, been out for 35 years. But within this time, we've brought you know, real change in development. Well, he's gone off track. He's done a lot of things which are actually wrong. And uh, as a result, he has um, put the country in a very bad position, economically, politically. It is also getting a bad name throughout the world. So he has to go.
always We ask the question. What is needed in the world? The man at the top of Malaysia's largest political party is at a crucial moment in the nation's political history. Prime Minister Najib Razak is possibly the ultimate political insider, the son of Malaysia's second prime minister and nephew of its third. He's the pick of the United Malays National Organization, or UMNO, one of the ruling National Front Coalition's race-based parties, and it's facing its most serious challenge after 56 years in power. General elections due in a matter of days are expected to be the most hotly contested in history. Every vote in every state will be valuable. The ruling coalition is having to fight hard against perceptions of corruption and cronyism. Najib has spoken internationally about his vision of Malaysia as an example to the world of a moderate Muslim country, part of a global coalition of moderates. But at home, people in racial and religious minorities are increasingly outspoken and angry at the way Malay Muslims are favored. Anwar Ibrahim, the leader of the opposition People's Justice Party, known as PKR, has challenged Najib to a debate ahead of the vote on May the 5th. Stay with us on Talk to Al Jazeera to find out how he responded to that and the important issues facing Malaysia. Prime Minister Najib Razak, thank you very much for joining us on Talk to Al Jazeera. We appreciate that it must be an extraordinarily busy and crucial time for you. There are descriptions of the election ahead as being indeed a struggle for the Malay soul, as it were. Do you think that's a fair enough description? Uh, let me put it this way. I think this, is, will, be, this will be a very uh, hard-fought, robust election. Uh, but I welcome it because, in a sense, it's reflective of uh, how far we've come uh, in, the, in the democratic process in Malaysia. We are much more matured in that sense. Uh, but um, as a political party, uh, we, we have uh, been in power for 55 years. But within this time, we have brought you know, real change and development in Malaysia. So although I expect this to be a, a keenly fought contest, but the, I'm cautiously optimistic that the voters will return uh, Barisan National National Front back into power. How, how do you personally feel about that? You've been in politics since you were 22. You come from a political dynasty. In that sense, but uh, my father died when I entered politics. So uh, he, he was not there to ensure that I, I rose in politics. You know, I, I had to do it my way, albeit with a good family name. I have no doubt about that. That helped. But uh, I had to fend for myself. You know, I had to show that uh, I could <coughs> stand on my own. And uh, I'm proud of my personal record because uh, I've risen through the ranks step by step. Uh, and now I'm privileged and honoured uh, to be able to lead this country and lead uh, the, my party. When you speak about the Malaysian people, it seems from surveys that they are differentiating between yourself, your personal approval has risen in the four years that you speak of, but your party, UMNO, remains rather unpopular. How do you explain that? I think... Uh in the sense that I have changed, and I, I've, I've taken this, this, you know, this you know, personal uh, commitment that I need to change with the times. Uh, and as, as the leader of the party and as the head of the government, uh, I must spearhead the change. Uh, and and I'm, I'm basically, uh, I believe I'm a, a reform-minded uh, leader of this country, and I brought in uh, unprecedented changes in yes, political, like economic and, and, and an entire governmental sphere. Uh, but I will concede that the party will take time because the party is a collection of, if you talk about UMNO, 3.2 million people. It's the strongest party, uh, but uh, you know, we have that strength. We are the, the single largest party with three, over 3 
million members. Uh, but you know, to change uh, a, a big party will take time. The elections, what, two yes. and a bit weeks yes. away? Yes. No, but people must believe that UMNO is, is on track to change. Uh, it is on track. Uh, you know, we can see that uh, we you know put in new faces. We'll be more. Are uh, the new candidates? The candidates. candidates. We're more responsive uh, to the needs of the people. We're more people friendly. Uh, we are engaging with, uh, you know, with uh, the wider constituency. Because one of the things that I want Amno to realize that it's not good just being a leader of Amno, a divisional leader of Amno, if you like. Mm -hmm. But you must you must have the support of all the others who are, who are not, your, not your customers, if you like, you know, or not your supporters. So UMNO has to realize that it, it has to have the broad appeal. Those people who are not your customers, according to the surveys, 21% undecided, 42% would vote for BN, 37% for the opposition, Pakatan Rakyat. 21% is a lot of people. And they come from your very diverse society here in Malaysia. It's one of the things that Malaysia is very proud of. But obviously you're aware that it's also criticized for having a, a race-based political system. And that's one of the things that analysts say is kind of under test at this point. You spoke about your candidates and how 30% of them are going to be new faces. But one of them is not a new face and is criticized for being for having made anti-Hindu statements. I'm talking about, uh, for people who are familiar with Malaysian politics, a man called Zulkifli Nurdin. Is he really an ideal candidate if that's what you're trying to put across? He, he has changed. He made that statement 10 years ago when he was in pass. And, but the, vi the video has gone viral. Exactly, but he now. did it 10 years ago and he has ap apologized. He has uh, repented. Uh, and mind you, at that time he even criticized me. You know, but now he's...